I feel like we have a lot of things to like toast to. All right. It's the 10 year anniversary of the Grand Kids Foundation. Yes. Grand Giving has raised over the years $3 million and has served 15 million meals yes. to people in need. The Roberto Clemente Award last year. Yes. So cheer. we're just going to toast to like all that. Cheers. <laughs> and the fact this is your third time on a drink with. Yes. How have you changed since you first went to New York eight years ago? Wow, you know, it's been eight years. I was 28 years old and, you know, hadn't touched 30 yet. Like Jay Z says, 30 is the new 20. And I wasn't even at that point yet, but leaving Chicago and Detroit, which were the only two baseball homes for me because I played high school here, I played college here. Detroit was my second home, and it's only three and a half hours away from Chicago. Yeah. I had been to New York to play as an opponent, but living there, you know, to be with such a good group of guys over there like Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez and Andy Pettit, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera, just to name a few, the adjustment kind of happened easily. You know, a lot was spotlighted on them, so I could just kind of sneak in and do uh -huh. my thing. And now, eight years later, I've been in New York for the last eight years, which is amazing. That. You know, everyone's like, why didn't you buy anything there? I didn't know I'd be there for eight years. If I would have known, I definitely would have bought something there. But it would definitely would have been more expensive than buying something here in Chicago. Does it feel like it has flown by? Now, looking back, it definitely has flown by. You know, it, it was amazing getting situated and realizing East Side versus West Side, you know, Midtown versus Central Park and all these different areas. And now I know them, you know, like the back of my hand and understanding it's good to go north and south in New York, but not east and west in Manhattan <laughs> because the traffic is so bad doing that. Yeah. But those are things you learn after you become uh, ingrained into the city for as long as I have. It really seemed like your mom and your dad really instilled how important it is to give back. What memories do you have of your mom doing that in the community? And also, where did her passion come from for that? <laughs> not sure where they got it from. I think they just realized that they had a lot of help along the way. I know my mom was able to go to college because she received the scholarship. My dad played basketball in college, so that obviously helped him financially to be able to do it. He's part of 10 brothers and sisters, so I'm sure they were all helping each other out in some form or way. And in me as a little kid, I didn't realize they were giving back until now I look back at it. For example, just watching them always invite people over to eat. Mm -hmm. Say, come to the house, get something to eat. Or they would always pack to-go plates to give the people. Clothes I outgrew, they would take to school because yeah. they were both teaching. And now I look back and go, they've been giving back my whole life. That was just the way they did it. I mean, even to this day, everyone still comes to my house for Thanksgiving to get themselves mm -hmm. a plate and take off. My mom's making mac and cheese because she knows people are going to come and just get yeah. that, take it to go to their next destination. What I admire about you is you have this great group of core friends that are pretty much like your high school friends. What do those relationships mean to you? Getting a chance to see different people from around the world. I think a lot of people admire the fact that my friendships have been so long. I mean, one of the guys I've known since first grade, it's been 30 years now. I got a friend that I've known that long, which is absolutely amazing to think about. Uh, a couple other I've known since fourth grade, some since high school, some since college. And these are true friends. They come see me throughout the course of the season. I come home and look forward to being with them. They help out at my kids' camps. They attend these events. We travel together. We do all these amazing things. And I look at other people and realize that a lot of their friendships that they have are recent and fairly uh -huh. new. And they don't have that in-depth you know, long stories and memories of good times like, and bad times. They know the those. real you. That's it, you know, they, they know it all. And we have all these great stories, both good and bad, from when we were six years old all the way up until now, as I sit here talking to you at 36. Do you think that you've been able to, like, stay humble and I feel, like, grounded throughout this, like, crazy career and journey? Do you feel like those, that those guys kind of, like, bring you... Yeah back down. They definitely keep me in my place and it's a combination of both them and my parents. I mean, I've always looked at it as this is my job but it's no different than anybody else's job. You know, Some of the things I do happen to be different but it doesn't make me any more important than yeah. anyone else and my mom was always big into treat others how you want to be treated and you know, I'm not going to come in and demand things because I wouldn't want anybody to do that to me. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with me and my friends. We joke around with each other, we're serious with each other, we push each other. You know, it's all these different things that help keep me in the place where I am. So free agency is coming up. Yeah. Um, what, what what does, um, I mean this is down the road, but like what does life at, mm -hmm. like after baseball look like? I know I've heard you say that you don't want to do coaching. Right, that's still the same. It's yes. still the same. How come? You know what, I got a great deal of respect for all the coaches I've ever had from Little League all the way up to the Major Leagues and 
the amount of time and effort to do that and put kids and adults out there in a position to win and the pressure not only from them but fans and parents and siblings to try to please everyone I think is just a little too much so yeah yeah um, it's just as like it seems like just as like demanding as playing right so if I'm gonna do that I might as well continue to keep playing so I, I want to be able to help those you know whether it's mentoring or coaching or clinics or assisting or being an ear or a voice yeah. to help in baseball, but I don't want to be on the field trying to win and that to happen to be my job. I also love what you said, control what you can control. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of like how you approach life, right. which, is, which is great. Who taught you that? Oh man, I think that was a combination of my dad and my mom mixed together. You know, you try to take on and handle so many different things. But for example, as a kid, when my parents would leave in the morning to go to work, because they worked in the city and I went to school in the suburbs, they would leave me at home by myself. So I had to get up and get my breakfast and get on the bus and go to school. So that's what I can control. I can make some breakfast, I can put my clothes on, I know where the bus is. There's no reason to start thinking about anything else or what school's gonna be like, because I have to do that stuff first. Yeah. Now once that's One done, step at a time. now we focus on school, okay? Got to make sure my homework's done, do this, that, and the other, stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Then come home and, and do it all over again the next day. Yeah. So trying to get too far ahead of yourself makes it difficult and you start worrying about things that may never even come. I know. And it's so easy to like get up in a tizzy about things that yes. like you're just not even there yet. That's I do it, it to myself all the time. All right. You're trying to slow down, taking some time. Uh, to yourself. So the question we ask everyone is mm -hmm. if you could have a drink with anyone, who would it be? Mm -hmm. And I remember who you said in our first interview and then our second one. He's not here today, but I tried to get Martin Lawrence to come. Oh, that would have been awesome. I follow him on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to hook that up for you Yes, in the future, in the future hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. That'd be awesome. And it, has that changed over the last couple of years? Wow, you know, there's always more people you want to add yeah. into it. It doesn't mean that you know yeah, you want to right, take someone right. off No, the exactly. List. And I've been Who's fortunate joining the party? to meet some really cool people recently. So if I had to add someone new to the party, I would say, and I know after we do this, it's, there's going to be yeah, more people no, that are going to pop we, up to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, here's an interesting one. I get told that I look like this guy a lot, and we have mutual friends and we've never met. It's Dulé Hill. Okay. So Dulé Hill was on a show called Psych. And he's got a Broadway show that he did in New York a little bit. And interesting enough, USA Today ran a picture of the two of us side by side, no. and everybody kind of ran with it. And there was one point where they were trying to actually get me on the show to do some stuff. So it'd be cool just to see, you know, if we look at each other and yeah. kind of go, hey, you know. But we know of each other, we just have never oh, met. that's so funny. So, you know, I think it's those types of things right now where you always hear of different people. Common's another one, being here in Chicago and the things that he does in the city. Same thing, we have a bunch of mutual oh, yeah. friends, but we haven't met. You guys met. have a lot to talk about. Um, Chance the Rapper, I've met quickly. Yeah. You know, we did a show together, uh, Windy City Live, and it was really brief and it was before he was taken off and before I was taken off and now we're both with this and I was like, you guys got to meet. I'm like, we have, but it yeah. was brief. You need to so. sit down and drink with him. Yeah. So I would say Dulé, because we need to see if we look like each other. <laughs> Common's another one and probably Chance. Uh, so those I are love my it. Three Great right answer. Now. Cheers yes. again. Cheers. Congrats Thank you again. to everything. And congrats just to like you. What's up everyone, this is Curtis Granderson, you're on a drink with. Thanks for watching. Cheers! Cheers.